Okay, using your spray gun to handle blotch, blotching works pretty well. Now the issue with it is, is if you've got a complicated piece or something that you really don't have really good access to, that can be an issue of getting it evenly coated. And that's the key. One of the things spraying does is again, you're laying down a uniform amount of film or color. So it's hard for, the, for it to blotch if the soft grain and whatever within the confines of the wood, if it doesn't have the material there to absorb, it can't. But you have to be careful. You can't go in and just, put, if you put a really wet coat on, what you're gonna see happen, you're gonna see it, it can blotch. What you wanna do is you wanna take your spray gun, you wanna open your pattern up, and you wanna turn your fluid way down. And you wanna up your pressure just a little bit. And you wanna go light coats. Now this is a piece of cherry that we've got sapwood in. And you don't get a drip, sorry about that, my fault. and I'm just dusting it on. A very dry coat is what I want. Now one of the things, my preference on this, my preference on this is a dye. For a simple reason, I can put as many coats of a dye on as I want. And even on this old plywood, Now your first inclination is going to be to just get in here and really hit it wet, but don't. You're gonna be far better off just to take your time, stop, let it dry a little bit, and then come back and hit it again. We'll let this dry a minute and come back. Dry a little bit. Now just as a point of interest, where I got these drips, that gun dripped, how would I handle that? Well, <clears throat> the best thing to do would be, on this case where I got a water base, is take some water and try to clean it, and then tune that gun down to a little fine dot and just kind of lightly mist a little on, and then start coming back over everything. Just don't go too fast. Because again, you, you get this thing wet and it, you're gonna let it blotch on you. Now I switch guns and the point, it, again, is a point of interest right here it's kind of hard to see, but right where the fluid needle and the trigger are, right up in here, there's a little packing washer back in there, and it's what was leaking. Now, on a high-end gun, I can go buy a new washer. They make rebuild kits for them. I don't even know if they make them for these, but at the price they are, that's a Harbor Freight. You just save the old gun for parts for others. But we just continue. Now look at that, I just slop dye all over it. Don't do that, I tell you. Hold on, what's going on now? All right, we're back. I can show you better. Can you see, this is that professional gun from Harbor Freight. Can you, can we see right at, you see, see right there there's a nut. The, the other guns don't have it. And I get, those are older guns, so I'm assuming that whatever little washer or packing in there, it's just not doing it. But I'll tell you what else too, you know, on the cups and whatever on these, you, you gotta use a little Teflon tape. But we're back cooking. This is, the, again, that's that professional one. Now, you can see, let me get the light on it right. Okay, you can see the sapwood and the heartwood. But, that, and the reason you're able to kind of see it now when the dye is wet is because the sapwood is soaking it faster than the heartwood, but it's still the same amount of material.
Now, the other thing we could have done that would have helped that would have been to have wiped it with some water and let the water kind of goes in and, and again it kind of acts as a pre-stain and it lets that dye float on top but again I need to spray it. If I wipe that it's going gonna, it's gonna to blotch. Now you can see this piece of plywood which is nasty. And again, what you're seeing now with the dye wet, you're seeing around the knots and whatever where you've got that really hard grain and, it's, and the, the rest of it's absorbing faster. But it does, it helps immensely. Sometimes on these old plywoods, there's not a whole lot does anything. So you gotta test it. But you know, spraying and using that fine coating is, you know, again, very light, dust it on. If you're doing a stain, you got to be careful. You start building up a whole lot of coats, then what's going to happen is you wind up losing adhesion because, again, a stain doesn't have a lot of binder in it, which is finish. Uh, and so what happens, and the other thing with the stain versus the dye is that, you know, the pigment isn't, in the case of a dye, it's totally dissolved. And in the case of a stain, again, as I've explained many times, think of it just as a zillion little teeny BBs that are kind of glued on here. That's a stain. It's a pigment. So, yeah, and this is still drying, but as it dries, it's kind of hard to show on camera, but as it dries, the color's coming in. Now, we'll let this dry a minute, and uh, I'll shoot a little bit of finish on here, and you can see what we got. All right, this is dried a little bit and you can see the plywood. There's a little, but I mean this is nasty. Then here on the solid cherry with the sapwood, I sprayed just this end of it with a little bit of water-based finish. And again, spraying the dye for blotch control works pretty well. Now with that one coat of water base on there, I can do one of two things. I can either glaze it, which is simply where I take a cloth or whatever pad with the dye on it and go over top of it. Or I can now dye it a little heavier and I don't have the blotching to worry about because I've got the base down there and I got it sealed in. So I can bring it up a little darker yet. This is kind of, we got a segment out here called layering colors and we're actually going to be using this same stuff. But you can see now I've gone darker again. I've got a little bit in there, but then you can see the solid cherry. We have virtually no blotching and we have a pretty nice even color going. And the sapwood's handled. That's pretty good. Again, I want to emphasize again, go light coats and just think about it, you know. But you know, it works good on a big top or something like that. Uh, it can be a little problematic. Like I said, if you're doing something that's got a lot of twists and turns and whatever, it can be, it can be a little bit of an issue trying to get in around and get it all even. But this, you know, going by, you know, the one little light coat of finish, and again, if I was using a solvent base, it would be the same difference, you know. Um, if I was using a lacquer or something like that, I'd put a light coat on there and let it set and dry. That works pretty good. All right, spraying to control blotch.